Welcome back and in today's video I am going to continue the concrete series and in this video we are going to discuss setting the wall panels. That's the wall panels that are going to go on top of the footings and we're going to go through that process. I'm going to go over some um, tools, the process, some of the hardware names so that you're familiar. After watching this video, you are not going to be an expert, but you are going to break the ice. You are going to get um, acquainted with some new subjects if you've never been in the field doing concrete or just kind of interested in it. This is what this video is for, is to get your feet wet and then make you a better carpenter if you don't know this subject. This video is a continuation of the concrete series. So if you haven't watched the footings video or the advice video I'm gonna leave a card for you right here or maybe it's right here check those out before you watch this one so you can get the whole entire process all together now let's get into the video let's go so when you're starting off the uh, process of setting your walls the layout is super important especially if you have jogs or different details it's important that you get your layout done properly that's why I usually layout set for foreman or usually seasoned journeyman so you make sure it's done properly mistakes at this process can cost you thousands of dollars when it comes to having to cut the concrete back or have to tear down a whole build you've already built and then reset it sometimes these mistakes are not cotton soft or it's already set and everything's ready to go you might have to cut the whole wall out so that's why it's imperative that you get that done properly and you get it done right the first time so when it comes to layout you're going to snap the lines it's going to be chalk you're going to snap them onto the footings and then you're going to roto hammer a down plate a down plate is a two by four that'll be like a guide for your panels and they're going to be attached there so it's gonna be a two by four you'll roto hammer it uh, you'll make multiple pins into the concrete now you don't want to pin it too many times to the point that now it's gonna be frustrating when you are um, stripping the forms later on now remember at this process everything that you do you're gonna have to strip after the concrete's all poured. So you wanna make sure you're, you're cognizant, always thinking, okay, is this enough to, so that it won't be a blowout, but also am I doing it to its overkill? You don't wanna overkill it, but you wanna make sure it's done properly. That's the balance you have to find as a concrete uh, carpenter. So after your layout is dialed in, you are going to start installing your plywood panels onto the down plates. And also as you're doing at the same time, you are going to start running a two by at the the top to lock it all in and that way you are going to be able to brace it so it's not going to be flopping because if it's only secured to the down plate it still can tip over um, the nails will come loose so it's good to secure it as you go so that way it's standing and then people can start working behind you it's kind of a conveyor belt system you want to get in front of guys and so you're not all log jam doing the same exact thing so some guys may be standing panels uh, and attaching the two bias in the top some guys may be uh, doing the bracing and then guys will file behind you and start doing the snap ties and then working on that function. One thing that's important to understand is when you are um, putting the panels up, make sure that you're using the same hole pattern on all the panels because they're going to mirror the other side. So the more identical they are, the better it is for the uh, snap ties to fit into both sides without there being a lot of like... Um, you have to bend in the snap tie or moving around. That's gonna happen regardless a little bit because of the rebar that's gonna be inside the wall. So you have to be, have a little bit of flex anyway, but the less amount of tension that's put on the snap ties from the holes not being properly set, the better you're gonna be. After you install all the snap ties, you'll put the John A's on there. The John A's should attach, but not be too snug because you still have to put your whalers on there. Now your whalers are going to be uh, two by fours that kind of saddle into the snap tie and then you'll hammer it and you'll lock it in now that's going to make the wall really rigid you'll do that on multiple levels until you get to the top the top shouldn't have any snap ties or holes you're going to attach uh, a two by on top with eight pennies and that's going to lock the top so there's not going to be any flex anymore and that's going to make it one continuous unit and then you go back to the strong back snap ties 
you'll know the, the strong back uh, snap ties are there because you cannot put a, um, a John A on there and lock them in. There should be too long, you should have too much give. You'll sandwich two two buys around the strong back snap tie and then you'll put a hairpin on there and that's how you lock that in place with the nail. Maybe multiple of them so that when you are vibrating the concrete, it doesn't wiggle loose and it, it, everything stays together. Now, this system has been done for a very long time. It's very old fashioned, but it still gets the job done. And a lot of times, if something's not broke, you don't have to fix it. So carpenters have been using this method for 40, 50 years, I've been told. So just keep doing the same way, it works. After the one side of the wall is finished, this allows for the trays to get in there. Usually uh, the iron workers will start doing the rest of the rebar. Um, if electri electricians need to put a, um, either outlet or light box in there, this is their time. So it's important that you get your job done so they can get in there so you're able to close this up and able to pour some concrete in there as soon as possible. So after all that is done, after all the rebar is all tied, the layout's good, um, the other trades I've got in there, plumbers, electricians, everything's done. Now it's time to close it up. Um, before you close it, it's good to get the grade, depending on uh, how the finish is on the top, you might use chamfer. Now chamfer is a, a, a piece of like wood that has a, a angle on there so that it gives it a nice finish at the top or sometimes you'll use grade nails. It kind of depends on if the wall is gonna be showing or not, if it's finished. Um, it's important to get those details. You'll probably snap a line for grade if it's not the very, very top uh, of your panels. And um, it's important that if you are uh, using chamfer, that you have proper angles. A lot of times in the corners, they want it to have a, a miter to go in there properly so that, because again, once you take that chamfer out of there, there's gonna be a void and you're gonna have that exposed finish. So you wanna make sure you do a good job with the chamfer. Now if the one side's all finished, you're gonna start uh, buttoning everything up. You're going to put the other panel on there. You're gonna put the uh, snap ties through. You put the John A's on there. You'll do that same exact process but now after all that's on there you'll put the down plate on there last and so that makes sure you don't have to attach it with the nail this time you'll put the you'll put the uh two by down there and then rotor hammer it and the concrete will make sure that it doesn't move too much see the snap ties will keep it in place also but also the concrete won't will push it and so it won't go past where the two by is on the ground so it kind of locks it in itself and makes sure that you know you're not going to have too much variance so after all the panels are all finished everything looks good now it's time to make sure that everything is uh, level and plumb you're going to have form savers against your strong backs you'll attach them and you'll hammer in stakes into the ground and now it's time to level and plumb your walls to make sure everything is done correctly um, you will take a piece of string line and you will put a a little chunk of three quarters plywood and you'll put it on one end. You'll plumb that side to make sure everything's good. Then you go to the other end and then do the same exact thing. So there should be a void between the string line of three quarters and you and a partner will go through and put the piece of plywood by the string line and see if it touches. If it, if it barely, barely slightly touches, that's good, and you'll move down the line. Now, this is kind of hard to describe, so it's something you have to do, you have to see it, but you'll kind of move the form savers back and forth, and then that way it'll start moving and you'll plumb it up. You have to move back and forward. It's an arduous process, so I know I'm being kind of vague when it comes to this, but it's kind of difficult to describe, but as you move on, you'll kind of learn this. So this video is not meant to to give you a step-by-step into -step exactly how it's done, but kind of give you an idea of what these things are and get you more familiar. Now, sometimes walls will have a bulkhead and that's the end of it. Um, that's where bulk pieces of, uh, both piece of plywood have an end and you'll put a smaller piece in there and lock it in. You should do a California corner where you'll put um, you'll put the piece in there and they'll have the, the whalers going out this way and then you'll have uh, two bias coming this way and they'll kind of lock in like this, right? So this way, 
there's no way for the concrete to move in. It's kind of like a log cabin. And then you'll put you'll slap another two by on there just to lock everything in, as you can see right here in the video. I think your walls are all buttoned up. Everything is lined and plumb. Uh, grade is established, whether it be through chamfer or grade nails. Now it's time to have a critical eye and look. Where could there be any structural like uh, mishaps? Uh, where is the most likely place for a blowout to happen? Are there any places where there's jogs and there's not any, um, there's not enough, you know, structural security there? Like maybe I want to put another two by there, slap another two by with some dupes on there, locking in place. I think just go on the extra step right here before you pour. This is what's going to lead to the success of not having blowouts. Blowouts are a huge waste of time, material, and it's just embarrassing when concrete's flowing and something that happens, it makes the whole process stop. So you want to take that time to go look and see where could there be a potential blowout? Uh, look and see, are there any huge gaps that might need to be finished or foamed uh, to make sure that they're um, they're not going to have a huge uh, buildup outside the forms because you have to think about that too. Sometimes, um, even though you might not have a blowout, you got to think: Are laborers going to come behind me and chip and then like uh, grind these things down? How can I make their lives easier too? So that's important also. So after everything's done, ready for uh, ready to pour concrete. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to uh, post the next video in the series, stripping and pouring concrete. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.